After centuries of flowing strong, a huge river is finally dried up, leaving behind a barren wasteland. But out of the ashes, something unexpected has emerged. A discovery that could change everything that we thought in millions of years. The Euphrates River is associated with prophecies about the mysteries of the riverbed. What lies beneath it? A mystery world or the rapture and Christ's second coming? How does it relate to the rapture and Christ's second coming? There are two prophecies regarding the Euphrates River in the book of Revelation. Revelation 9, 13 through 15 states that the sixth angel blows his trumpet. And I hear a voice from the four horns of the golden altar in front of God, releasing the four angels who were chained at the vast river Euphrates. It says to his sixth angel with the trumpet and the four angels who have been prepared for this hour, day, month, and year are unleashed to slaughter one-third of humanity. This is a foreshadowing of the end of the world. Wars in that line of Euphrates will dry up, according to the following prophecy. What is fascinating about this prophecy is that we are already witnessing the initial phases of it play out, as various countries dam the river and the areas near the river suffer from terrible droughts. Then the sixth angel pours down his bowl on the great Euphrates River, and it dries up so that the kings from the east might march their forces towards the west without difficulty. Revelation 16.12 says, that the Euphrates has never previously dried up. So why has it all of a sudden started to dry up now? The Euphrates River is mentioned in the book of Genesis in the Holy Bible. The book of Genesis was written roughly 3,050 years ago, between 165 and 150 BC, and various Bible predictions are already coming to pass. The Euphrates is referred to as the Great River five times in the Bible. A barrier separating Israel's heritage from what lay to the east the Bible claims that the river offered some degree of security to Israel because it was difficult to cross and the wilderness to the west separated it from Canaan's promised land. It got within 3,000 kilometers of Palestine before turning to the southeast. This is because Revelation seems to be about releasing a dam used for defensive purposes. Islam also says that the Euphrates River will dry up. The Quran, written 600 years after the book of Revelation, recounts the Euphrates River drying up and a mountain of gold is exposed. It is said that a mountain of gold will be revealed in one hour, before the Euphrates River dries up. According to the Prophet Muhammad and every one of them will believe that he is the only one still alive. According to research, it is yet to be determined when the Euphrates River will dry up. The Euphrates Tunnel, also known as the Medea Tunnel, is a historical structure that is believed to have been constructed between 2180 and 2160 BC, according to ancient manuscripts. The tunnel was built to connect two palaces located on the opposite banks of the Euphrates River. The exact location of the tunnel remains uncertain today, but it is mentioned in two manuscripts published in 50 BC and 250 AD. The Taurus manuscript written by Queen Semiramis in 50 BC describes the tunnel as a way for her to easily cross the river between her palaces without having to physically cross the river. The manuscript also states that the construction of the tunnel was completed in 260 days with the river being redirected to its original channel so that it could flow throughout the entire construction project. Queen Samaramis also constructed two brazen gates at each end of the tunnel, which remained in place until the Persian Empire. Another manuscript of the Bible, Ethnic Historica, also describes the building of the tunnel in the year 2050. A manuscript states that a lady named Medea, who was once the ruler of the regions on either side of the Euphrates River, built an incredible bridge that crossed the river and connected the palaces on each shore. To do this, she stacked stones along the river's banks and used copper, pitch, and all the men she could find to make the construction. She then directed the streams into the lakes, and when the river was dry, she excavated two fathoms deep and built a hollow tunnel. The roof of the tunnel was raised to a level with the stream bed, and the foundations and tunnel walls were made sturdy with the use of pitch. The Euphrates River is a historically significant river and is said to have played an important role in the final days before Christ's return. The drying up of the Euphrates River is a precursor to the end of the world as we know it. According to Bible prophecy, the Euphrates River is also known as a Syrian river god and was recognized as the god of rivers in modern-day Turkey and Iraq. Rural communities that rely heavily on river water for agriculture have experienced tensions and conflicts as a result of the rivers drying up. The Fertile Crescent, a region consisting of territory bounded by the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, 
was known for its exceptional agricultural potential during ancient times. However, with the decreasing flow rate of the Euphrates River in Syria, humanitarian organizations are concerned that a catastrophe is on the verge of occurring. If the river completely dries up, this state poses a danger to the functioning of the primary hydroelectric power plants in Titron and Tabka, which would result in an even smaller supply of clean water and electricity. Scientists have already uncovered some horrifying information about the changes in the Euphrates River. And what they could do to signify for the future of humanity, a video that has been shared online reveals that the water level has decreased rapidly and it also shows the existence of an ancient building with perfectly placed, complete steps under the Euphrates River. However, a recent discovery has caused concern for the future of the Euphrates and the people who rely on it. Government assessments predict that the Euphrates River could dry by 2040 due to low water levels and the effects of climate change. The river's flow has been hampered by dams built upstream in Turkey, Syria, and Iran, and global warming has contributed to the increasing heat and erratic rainfall in the region. A team of German and Kurdish archaeologists have uncovered a 3,400-year-old Mitanni Empire-era city once located on the Tigris River. The settlement emerged from the waters of the Mosul Reservoir earlier this year as water levels fell rapidly due to the extreme drought in Iraq. The extensive city with a palace and several large buildings could be ancient Zahiku, believed to have been an important center in the Mitanni Empire. This unforeseen event put archaeologists under sudden pressure to excavate and document at least parts of this large, important city as quickly as possible before it was resubmerged. The Kurdish archaeologist Dr. Hassan Ahmed Kassim, chairman of the Kurdistan Archaeology Organization, and the German archaeologists, Professor Dr. Ivana Pulyes and Professor Dr. Peter Falsner, spontaneously decided to undertake joint rescue excavations at Kamune. These took place in January and February 2022 in collaboration with the Directorate of Antiquities and Heritage in Duhok. Within a short time, the researchers succeeded in largely mapping the city. In addition to a palace, which had already been documented during a short campaign in 2018, several other large buildings were uncovered. A massive fortification with walls and towers, a monumental, multi-story storage building, and an industrial complex. The extensive urban complex dates to the time of the Empire of Mitanni, approximately 1550 to 1350 BC, which controlled large parts of northern Mesopotamia and Syria. The huge magazine building is of particular importance because enormous quantities of goods must have been stored in it, probably brought from all over the region, says Dr. Ivana Pulyes. Hassan Kassim concludes, the excavation results showed that this site was an important center in the Mitanni Empire. The research team was stunned by the well-preserved state of the walls, sometimes to a height of several meters, despite the fact that the walls are made of sun-dried mud bricks and were underwater for more than 40 years. This good preservation is due to the fact that the city was destroyed in an earthquake around 1350 BC, during which the collapsing upper parts of the walls buried the buildings. Rivers are increasingly drying up and leaving behind a horrifying history. Water shortages have become increasingly widespread in Iraq, and by 2025, a catastrophic drought is expected to hit the country, reducing the Tigris and Euphrates to mere trickles. This will have serious repercussions for the cities of Dakar, Mesun, and Basra, as well as neighboring governance. The Ministry of Water Supplies has warned that the eastern region of Wasit will experience a serious shortage of water in the coming months, and residents of some towns are already making preparations to uproot due to water constraints and the sustainability of their farms. The government of Iraq has also been trying to broker a deal with Turkey and Iran to ensure that it gets its fair share of the region's water resources. But so far, these efforts have been unsuccessful. The world bankers have warned that if temperatures rise by 1 degree Celsius, as expected, most of the government's resources will be diverted to dealing with the ongoing political and security concerns, economic issues, and tensions with neighboring governments, as one of the Ministry of Water Resources consultants, Awendia, put it. A strategic plan produced by the Ministry of Water Resources highlighted strategies to tackle this scarcity, which is the updating and readjusting of irrigation projects and systems. The effort must continue in order to save and rationalize massive amounts of water to conserve the presently cultivated regions. The completion of this project is expected to take until 2035 and cost between 50 and 70 billion dollars. However, the ministry currently does not have the money to finish the project. We bow before you and thank you for watching. Until we meet again.